In this video, I'm just going to take a quick look at the maze generation feature of the puzzle generator. Now, once you've extracted the zip file from Gumroad, it should look a little bit like this. Now, the first tool we want to go into is the Excel tool here, which is the export tool. You double click on it. And if we enable editing, enable content, just make that a little bit bigger. Now you may notice there's no section for mazes down here, but what we can do under config is these are some of the terms used in the puzzles. For example, in the mazes, you have the different difficulties. So what you may like to do before you start generating your mazes is either translate the terms into your own language or use different ones by just putting them in the empty spaces here. Once you've done that, go to main, click submit and OK. And then we're going to load PowerPoint. And then PowerPoint, we're going to go to the maze generation tool. Now here, the first option we're going to pay attention to is the header text. So this will just be as maze, it will be maze one, maze two, maze three, maze four, so on. You can change that if you like. And then we've got the header font size. And we've got how many pages worth of mazes you want to create. The next one is the level of the maze. So the easier the maze, the bigger the pathways, and the easier it is to, to solve. Just leave that on very easy for now. Now the first major feature here is the maze shape. So I'm going to just show you that quickly. So the initial one is as blocks. If I just leave everything else as it is at the moment, click OK. With block mazes, the mazes are made up of basically loads of little teeny blocks and the little um, squares. Just wait for that to finish. You can see here the, the layout quickly. So it has the header title there and a difficulty on the left. And then we get our solutions as well. So if we undo that quickly. And then if I show you just the one as walls. Now this is the more traditional type of maze that you may be used to. And I'm going to leave this on a field path to start with. So you can see, leave everything else the same. So this is the more traditional maze with just the lines in it. And with the block fill, that means it fills all the pathway like this. If we go back again, Go back into there and this time I'm going to show you the line pathway which is basically just as if someone has drawn through the pathway with a pencil or a pen. Just wait for that to load quickly. As you can see the pathway is drawn in in the line format. So if we undo that once more go back into the maze generator and then now, this is the next option that may, you may find useful, is uh, the path color. In examples, it was red. So you can use the color picker up here to choose a pathway color. And then you can also choose the start point color and also the end point color. And we'll click OK on that just to show you the different colors. So as you can see here, we have the blue arrow and the black arrow and the grey path. We undo that again. We go back to here. The next option you'll see is the start and end points. Now, the default is randomly assigned. The next option is to start at the top left and end in the bottom right. So I'll just quickly do that to show you. 
wait for that to load. On here, the puzzles start on the top left and they end on in the bottom right. You undo that again, go back in again. And then the final option on the start points is to start at the top center and end in the bottom center. So click OK on that one. Let's wait for that to load. And then this one you can see we've started in the top center and we ended in the bottom center. So we undo that, go back in again. Now the next option you see is basically to the size of the grid. You've got two options, which is to adapt to the page, page ratio, which as you saw, it was a rectangle. Or you may prefer the more traditional square size mazes, which I'll just show you now. So this will always keep the mazes in a square, no matter the size of the page. We'll go back again, and we'll go back into the Maze in Motion tool again. Your settings. Now the, the final um, options that may be useful to you is to add the left and right margins. This is particularly useful for to create in puzzles for um, to upload onto KDP. You can choose a minimum margin here. So I'll do 0.9 for example. We'll go in. And as you can see, there's much more margin, much more space on either side, which is particularly useful when you're uploading large uh, books onto KDP where the maze may get sucked into the gutter a little bit. And then the final option on here is the ability to hide titles and levels. Now that is a bit more, if you're a bit more advanced, and I'll go, in that, I'll go into that in another video. But basically what that's used for is if you want to bulk create puzzles and then you want to export them and use them with a the bulk image importer. But that's it for this video and I hope it helps.